Welcome to the YSI Speak Out virtual tour. I'm your host, Zara King. Over the next 30 minutes, we're gonna take a virtual road trip around Ireland to hear about the amazing work teenagers are doing with YSI this year. We're gonna be stopping off in Munster, Connacht, Ulster, and Leinster to hear about the positive changes you're bringing to your community. Right, no time like the present. Let's hit the road.
Well, our first stop is Ulster, where the teams are up to some great things. Let's take a look. Well, first up, we're going to Ulster and I'm joined now by Orla McDade from Ross's School in County Donegal, Gormlith McCongle from Colosta Oriel in County Monaghan and Megan Griffith from Royal School in County Cavan. Hi girls, how are you? Good. Good, good, good. Okay, so we're going to start first with Orla. So Orla, your project is about period poverty. Tell us a bit about that. Well, our main goal at the start of the project was to normalise them and to get so that women weren't embarrassed or ashamed to like talk about them because they're a normal thing like unfortunately they're a normal thing for us women and everyone goes through them so we didn't want women to feel embarrassed or ashamed about having them and it's such an important conversation isn't it i mean so tell us a bit about the work you've been doing throughout the project i'm really interested in that well uh we started the first like action that we went with was we were making dispensers for uh, our school bathrooms so that they would be like free of charge for students in our school so that they wouldn't have to be paying for something that they need and that is essential to them. And so we are currently making dispensers to put in the bathrooms in our school. And uh, we're currently going to make a information drive for uh, our students in our school and the local national school students to explain uh, everything about periods and everything you need to know so that there's no one go growing up and not knowing anything about them if they don't have a mother figure or an older sister to talk to about them. Yeah. And did you find that people were um, happy to engage and have that conversation? Do you think periods are becoming destigmatized amongst your age group? At the start of our project, there was only like five or six girls, but one boy. And then throughout our project, more boys joined. So it was great to see how they feel so strongly about it as much as we do. So it was great to see like the diversity between boys and girls and how they all feel that we sh should normalize it and it should be, there shouldn't be so much of a stigma around them. Yeah, absolutely. No, well done. It sounds like an amazing topic and it is, it is such an important conversation to have because it is such a basic thing that happens to half of the population every 28 days. But to have that conversation and to break down that stigma is so important. So well done and best of luck with your continuing work on it. Um, Gormuth McCongle, Gormuth, uh, you are working on a piece about um, masks and I suppose uh, the waste management of masks because with every single one of us is, is using masks now, many of us using recyclable ones. Tell us a bit about the work that you're doing. Yeah, so our project is Task Masks and we're focusing on reducing the pollution caused by single-use masks. Uh, we chose this topic for several reasons, such as witnessing a major increase in single-use masks being littered in our community, becoming aware of the lack of guidance and information surrounding the pollution and also realising as a team that we can make a real important difference on this topic before the damage done is irreversible as Obviously, this is a new kind of issue that's arised since the pandemic. So we feel that it's important to kind of act on it at the very beginning before um, it really causes the damage. Sure. And I suppose you've obviously been looking at the the issue that it is. is like, I suppose a lot of us are seeing masks, like even just anecdotally on the streets every day, aren't we? People are discarding them. Yeah, it, it's become a kind of normal thing now in the streets, like chewing gum and cigarettes are now it's the new kind of thing in the streets and unfortunately the single use masks have a lifespan of 450 years so they're going to be each of them are going to be with us for a while and um recent statistics are showing that the uk alone are dumping around 53 to 54.5 million single use masks every day so it's you know increasingly becoming a bigger issue so it's quite important to act on it at the beginning yeah absolutely it's as you mentioned it's the new sort of chewing gum it's the new issue and we are all seeing it every single day and um, Megan I suppose tell us a bit about the work that you've been doing in your project 
So our project was physical activity and its positive impact upon your mental health. And we decided to go with this topic because we felt like it was a topic that was so important before the pandemic, but it got increasingly important during the pandemic. And it was something that I think we'd all, all been taken for granted, like going for a walk and getting out for fresh air. So we decided that when we got back to school, we wanted to bring this to our school community and give them something to look forward to and show how much of a difference going out for a walk or a run can like make on your mood. And that's what we did. And what did people say to you when you were chatting to them about it? I suppose all of us kind of live for that walk, don't we, within our 5K at the moment. It's really the only thing we can do at the moment. Yeah, like whenever we were talking to people in our school, everyone seemed to agree with us. And we ran different activities in the, in the last lockdown, the one that we're still in. We ran a step challenge and so many students got involved and teachers as well and so many families so that was great and so many people said that the difference they felt after going for a walk or a run to try get their steps up was like phenomenal and at the end like we did a survey and so many people said the difference that they felt in the four week period was so like so crazy and they said that like they're going to keep it up so it inspired people as well to really try to be as active as they can. Absolutely. Well, guys, thank you very much for joining us today and best of luck with your projects and keep up the great work. Thank you. Thank you, thank you guys. Cheers. Well, there's someone very special joining us now with a message for our Ulster teams. Hi guys, Richard Chambers here, news correspondent with Virgin Media News, just saying congratulations to the YSI class of 2021. You've done incredible work throughout the last year. It doesn't go unnoticed. It's very, very important to focus in on what's happening in your own community and try and making uh, other lives better. So uh, congratulations to everybody. Best of luck now uh, with it and best of luck with the future. Stay involved in your community. Stay making a difference. Thank you so much and very, very well done. Well, we're back on the road and our next stop is Connacht. Let's take a look at some of the great work that's happening there. Well, I'm joined now by Ava Mulry from Manskull Wirra gone small in County Roscommon, Connor Byron from a Holy Rosary in County Galway, and Anna Rowan from St Mary's in County Mayo. Hi guys, how are you? And we're going to start with Ava. Ava, your project is about sport and misconceptions in sport. Tell us a bit about that. Um, so our project is called Sport Has No Gender. And it's basically about um, women's sport and how it's not promoted as much as men's. And we just feel that we aren't really um, up as high as the men's and we aren't promoted as much on the media or anywhere in general. So, yeah. So tell us about the types of conversations you're having around that project and who you're speaking to about it. So when we were trying to come up with ideas to try and promote it, we um, we came up with to make a podcast. So what we do, we'd interview like certain people involved with the GAA. So we interview people like um, Jackie Hurley, Fiona McHale, and Michael Finneran and Shane Kern. And most of them, we'd probably ask them about like, have they ever felt they, they've they seen or they felt put below men's football in their years involved. And so we try to get as much information as much as possible. Well done, that's incredible work. Um, Connor, you have got a really important project, uh, Smile Behind the Mask, because obviously all of us are trying to learn at the moment uh, exactly how to do that. We're all trying to communicate without having those subtle kind of messages that we can send with our facial expressions. So tell us about your project. So it's obviously about mental health and well-being. So see, after a few weeks back in September, when we returned to school, we noticed the buzz wasn't the same. 
there was no activities going on during lunch or, or even after school. So the lack of interaction was very difficult for some students, especially first years, because they weren't really mixing. They were kind of staying in their own bubble and just staying with the primary school friends. So we try to make them more confident and to get to know more as well. And uh, with those events, I suppose, particularly in first year, you know, you're trying to make friends, you're coming in, you're sort of the youngest people in the school. Uh, did you get feedback from them? Do they feel like those events really made a big difference for them? Yeah, because they totally enjoyed it. Like, and it was because they were getting to know people in the class, even outside the class. And it's very, it's a confidence booster for them doing all these events. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, it kind of brings us on nicely to your project, Anna, which is Project Positive. Uh, tell us about it. What exactly is Project Positive? Yeah, so Project Positive is basically we want to create awareness about mental health in our community and our school. So we made, we came up with the name Project Positive because there's so much negativity right now. And we made basically tools for people who are going through bad days to make, brighten up their day a little. And so what kind of advice were you able to give them and what sort of tools did you offer them? So we made a virtual toolkit, which is an online space where people can access to our Instagram positive, positive, pro, project positive.ysi and basically a place where you can get advice and information on different mental health issues if you're having a bad day. Brilliant. Well, guys, well done. You're making a huge impact in your community. And thank you so much for coming on to chat to us about it. Uh, thanks, Millie, and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Well, now we have a special message for the Connacht team. Here it is. Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dale Cronin here. You might recognize me from a little band called Hometown or from a TV show called Dancing with the Stars. I usually host these YSI events and I'm absolutely gutted that we can't be there in person, but I want to wish you all the very best of luck on this virtual tour. I know for a fact you're all going to smash it. Best of luck, be confident and just have the crack. That's what it's all about. And I can't wait to hopefully get back into a room with everyone having the crack with those events. And yeah, just want to say a massive best of luck and hopefully I'll see you all in the future. Take care. Okay so our next stop on our virtual road trip is Leinster and there's some great projects coming in from that region. Let's take a look. Well, some really amazing work being done there. Well done to everyone involved. Let's take the chance to chat to some of those team members from Leinster now. Uh, we're joined by Adam Gray from De Lacey's College in County Meath, Alice McKenna from Colosh de Breed in County Dublin, and Luke Walsh from St Mary's CBS in County Leash. Hi guys, how are you? I'm going to start uh, with yourself, Adam. So right. your project is all about discrimination of young people. I'm interested yeah. in this. Tell us about it. So the title of the project is Don't Judge Us Before You Know Us and it's about teen discrimination and uh, judgment of like teens and um, especially in like my area because or in Ashburn where my school is uh, there isn't a lot to do for teens like there's not a lot of places to go so we're often left hanging around and people obviously don't like that because we, they think we're troublemakers but we want to show that we're not and um, so we thought like, we thought of that idea and we wanted to expand on it so we uh, did a survey in our school and a lot of students came back saying the same that they felt uh, discriminated and then judged by older generations when they were just hanging around with their friends and um, so we kind of wanted to solve this problem so uh, we had, like we wanted to educate the younger generation so like end the teens now 
people, especially like the first years who are coming into their teenage years. And so we are planning on doing a workshop if we get back to school with the first years to educate them on how to handle, handle themselves in public, how to treat themselves, their peers, and older generations with respect. But we also want to uh, teach older people that we're not troublemakers. So by doing this, we've done loads of things like we gone in our local communities we did litter picking we did a virtual concert in our school for a nursing home at christmas because they, they couldn't get visitors and we also at christmas did a saint vincent de paul drive so we collected lots of food around the school and we got people to bring in food and then we sent it to saint vincent de paul and also to kind of help the teens in our neighborhood and our town to have things to do we went to our counselor alan tobin and we talked to him and he's on board and he wants to definitely set up things for te- teens to do so they're not hanging around. Well, well done. That's a great work, Adam, in fairness, like, because obviously you're trying to, you know, integrate, I suppose, young people into their own communities and have better relationships with, with people of all ages. So it's, it's incredible work you're doing and, and well done. It's so impressive. Um, yourself, Alice, a woman after my own heart, retail therapy. What's this about? So we are doing our project, it's called Brand New To You, and it's about tackling fast fashion as a country. So our project is about trying to get young people in our area and nationally around the country to take a stand and think about their fast fashion choices that they're making. So instead of buying from an online fast fashion store, think about the people who are making those clothes, what they have to go through and um, like the struggles they have and instead of doing that going to your local charity shop and donating your clothes or buying clothes from there because those charity shops are then giving the money into good quality um, reasons in the community and then also upcycling your clothes to teach you that because something is, if you don't like it now you can change it and you'll like it for longer and you'll get to keep it for a longer period of time. I think as well because people have been unable to get out to the shops basically you've sort of been forced haven't you to look at your wardrobe and decide well actually what could I wear again or or what could I sort of repurpose do you find that a lot of your friends are doing that now? That's something we went through as well because we were thinking about like upcycling like how do we incorporate that in and then we all started talking saying well during our lockdowns we went through our wardrobe went through it decided what we'd keep like change some things to make like jeans into shorts or turn t-shirts into like shorter tops or something so it's like we were all did it in not knowing that we were doing it but in turn it was actually helping the environment and it was helping our projects and taking part in it as well I love that I wish that had been the way when I was your age good work thank you Alice for that uh Luke your project is about fight for sight what's this about yeah, so our project's official title is called, it's Fight for Sight. And the main aim of our project is to try to uh, create a sense of awareness in our school about visual impairment. And we've also wanted to, we've also set out a number of measures to help visually impaired students navigate our school uh, easier as well. So, to you know, there are two quite distinct problems. And we did have a challenge working on the two of them, but uh, we had a great group and we managed to power through and get it done, you know. So this, for the social changes we've planned in Awareness Week for when we get back to school, um, we have videos made to show every every class, every year group, so that you know they know the message and the ethos for our project. And we've also create we've also created many many um, physical changes around the school. Some of these are braille signage around doors, colour coding hallways, and uh, colour coding stairwells as well. Uh, we've also introduced a VR video so that a, a visually impaired student, uh, they can look at this before they come into the school and get a sense of the place so they're not totally lost on day one. Uh, we've also done a lot of work in collaboration with the NCBI. We've had guest speakers come in from the NCBI and we've, you know, yeah, we've been very, we've been working very hard there. Wow, that is so impressive. You've done an awful lot of work on this. And what sort of, I'm interested to hear the kind of conversations and the anecdotes that you've heard from people throughout this project about, I suppose, primarily the challenges that the visually impaired people face in the school environment. And maybe um, has there been conversations where people have become a little bit more aware because, because of this project, the fact that even just having this conversation sort of wakes people up, things that might not have even occurred to them. Like when you talk about the the virtual tour, things like that, that it just, it makes such a big difference to somebody who's visually impaired, moving into a new school environment, just having that little bit of a heads up can be so vital. Mm. 
Yeah, we have a number of visually impaired students in the school at the moment. And I suppose when you look at the wider school community, you know, it's, 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 it is quite surprising the way, you know, people don't think about it. I mean, personally, before I did the project, I didn't think of it either. I know a lot of other people didn't. And it's something that it's really until you're, pro until you're properly faced with the challenges that you kind of notice and you think, right, we need to do something about this. Guys, thank you so much. Um, I feel like I've learned a lot from having this conversation with you this morning. Uh, all three very different topics, but all very important conversations uh, that we should be having on a regular basis. So well done and best of luck with the rest of your project. Well, thank you for talking to us today, guys. We've got a special message now for our Leinster teams. Let's take a look. Hi folks, Hazel Chu here, your Lord Mayor of Dublin City. I want to record a quick video to say congratulations to all the young social innovators for speaking out this week on issues they care about. So a special thank you to everyone involved in this and especially to the Leinster and Dublin teams. Uh, I'm a little biased, but uh, well done to everyone involved and well done to all the teams involved. And it's great to see such enthusiasm and energy from young people um, looking after our city. So hopefully I'll get to meet you all soon one day in person. But in the meantime, look after yourselves, take care and uh, see you soon. Hey, how's it going? Michael Darren McCauley here. Uh, just giving a shout out to all the young social innovators um, and all the good work that they're doing. Uh, so I know there's a lot of big projects going on all around Dublin at the moment. Uh, so I just want to say all the best with it. Uh, congratulations. Uh, I know these are kind of heartfelt projects going on in the community. Uh, I work in Dublin 1 where community is important uh, to everyone around the area. Um, and so don't think that, uh, that the work you're doing is going unnoticed. Uh, so look, keep up the good work uh, and best of luck with everything going forward. Well, we're nearing the end of our virtual road trip and it's been amazing to see the incredible work that teenagers are doing right across the country. Uh, before we park up the YSI van, let's take a look at what's happening in Munster. Well, I'm joined now by some team members from Munster, including Neve Cronin from Barra Community School in County Cork. We've got Shane O'Connor from Abbey School in County Tipperary and Luke O'Sullivan from Killarney Community College in County Kerry. Hi, guys. How are you? Good. Good. Yeah. Good. OK, we're going to start with yourself, Neve. Uh, your project is about the Wild West. What is this about? So, Want the Best Come West is for trying to promote the um, people in urban areas around Ireland come and live um, in rural areas such as Bear or any rural area around um, Ireland. We um, feel like that there is a very low population in rural areas so um, it has um, a very low rate of COVID-19 um, so we feel like it is um, a really important um, thing to tell people to come and live in rural areas. And so what is it, what are the sort of attractive qualities that people need to know about if they were planning to move somewhere like that? Um, there's beautiful scenery, there's mountains, there's the sea, um, clean, fresh air. 
it's actually quite a great place to be during a lockdown I'd imagine is it yeah it's brilliant and within your 5k there's like beautiful walks like outside my door I can just go up a mountain it's brilliant brilliant fantastic so Shane tell us about your project you were looking at bike safety <laughs> That's right. So our project, Use Your Head, Use Your Helmet, was aimed at raising awareness of the prevalence of acquired brain injury in our communities, as well as the complacency of young people when it comes to wearing a helmet while cycling. So as a result of our project, our main aims were to decrease the number of people who suffer acquired brain injury and increase the number of people who cycle safely and wear their helmet. And so had you spoken to some people who had had those experiences? Uh, We did. We spoke to people who suffered acquired brain injury and are currently um, you know rehabilitating themselves and as well as this we talked to Liz Ryan she's works with acquired brain injury Ireland the charity that helps manage people with acquired brain injury and it must have been interesting to hear their stories I'd imagine Shane about the sort of experiences they had in terms of the accident they had and their life afterwards and the big changes what, what do they tell you um, it really was very interesting now so it really inspired us to number one, educate people on safe cycling. And as a result of this, we designed a safe cycling course for young people, which we conduct in our local Cullen National School. And this taught the students about cycling etiquette in an accessible manner before they embarked themselves on the road cycling. And in the future, we plan to roll this course out to other primary schools. As well as this, myself and another student designed a prototype of a device to alert cyclists to put on their helmet when they sit on the saddle of their bikes using pressure switches and buzzers. We successfully tried this and we've sent our prototype out to be professionally designed. Wow, you guys are really across this. It sounds amazing. Well done, this is great, great work. Um, Luke, you guys are tackling false perceptions. I'm really interested in this. Um, okay, nice to meet you. My name's Luke and I'm from a group called The Connected Four. Um, our group is tackling the false perceptions of ADHD, ADD, autism, dyslexia and dyspraxia. Um, And not just that, but we're also trying to prevent bullying um, and we're starting at a young age. Actually, we went to the YSI then and got funding from them to create a book um, that's going to be specifically aimed, that we're in the process of designing, that's going to be specifically aimed to target the younger audience. For example, anyone like we're planning on distributing this to primary schools, so most likely junior infants to about third class, fourth class maybe. so we're trying to, I guess, stop bullying before it even starts, if that makes sense. And what do you hear from people about their experiences of bullying in school? Um, oh, actually, that's something I should probably um, word better. Um, about bullying, I guess in some ways it's not just about stopping bullying with people with ADHD, dyslexia, dyspraxia, autism, etc. But we think that if we can tackle bullying in these sectors, it will make life easier for everyone. And the thing is, like currently we're also in the process of doing interviews with people with these conditions to find out about exactly that. And it is more common for people with these conditions to be bullied because usually bullying starts from someone being different. So we're hoping that if we can normalize being different, then bullying will stop generally or decrease at least. Well done. And I think this is incredible work. And this is why YSI is so important, isn't it? Because all of you, the three of you are doing such different things, but they are such important conversations that you're starting within your school community, outside of your school, within your household and raising awareness of all these different topics. I can I can actually feel the passion from you guys. You're so driven to get this done. So listen, well done. Thank you for chatting to us today. Thank you. Well, we have a very special message now for the Munster teams. Let's take a look. Hey, YSI class 2021, Neve Cotter here, Cork Ladies Footballer. Just want to say a massive well done and congratulations to all the teams participating in the YSI programme this year. It's just brilliant to see so many young people speaking out about issues that are just so important today. I actually participated in the programme myself when I was in TY in school, so I'm fully aware of how worthwhile the programme is. So just want to say you're making such a difference in your local community, so just please keep up the great work and I'm really looking forward to seeing all the projects that come out of it. 
So we've come to the end of the YSI Speak Out virtual tour roadshow. I hope you've enjoyed your road trip with us. Uh, don't forget to check out all the other projects online at youngsocialinnovators.ie forward slash speak out 2021. Now, if you're a teacher or a teenager who weren't involved this year, of course, there's always next year. So get your thinking cap on, get your team together and get going. Now, where did I park the van?